Hey there, Cherie here. Welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm back today with a bonus project using this Farm Friends collection from Mia Charo. I've already shown you how to make a quick and easy quilt top, how to make pillow covers, as well as how to make tote bags using this panel. And now I have one final bonus project that I would like to share. I really love this collection and I, I could think of a bunch of more things to do, but let's just do this final project. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more cool project that you could do with one of these quilt panels, especially if you you know got the full panel piece. Like I said, it comes with two of these uh, 24 and a half by 21 and a half inch uh, printed panels. I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy apron. And so I have this panel. I'm going to go back up and trim off the salvage edge there like I did with the other ones. And then I have three quarters of a yard of this coordinating floral fabric. Okay. So first, let me tell you what I'm going to do with this. So this, this is going to be, you could skip this part if you wanted. I like to have aprons that kind of wrap around and cover a bit of, you know, the back area also. Um, you could also just do this and especially say if you're making this for like a, you know, a teenager, a small child, not a small child because it would be too long, but say like a teenager, a tween, you could leave it just like this. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting from this three quarter yard inch fabric strips that I'm going to add onto the side to give more coverage. So there's a full kind of wraparound fabric. So the panel will be in the front, the florals will be on the side and the back, but I'm also gonna cut my waistband from this first, okay? So let's cut the waistband and then we'll use what's left over to create the side panels, the side pieces. And this is all freestyle. There's no pattern for this. I'm just making this up, okay? So I'm gonna go in here. First, let's see how long I need the pieces to be for the side. I, yeah. So you can see here, if I want my side pieces to go from the top of the panel to the bottom, I have about this much here that I can cut off for my, um, actually let's do it from this right here. Cause now I'm gonna cut that off from the top, okay? Okay, let me make sure this is lined up. Then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just going to lay this here so I know where to cut. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut off this top and the piece that I have left from my waistband at the same time. You can use your rotary cutter and ruler if you prefer. Just cut straight over, getting those both done at the same time. If you're a bit new to sewing and you're afraid of your fabric shifting, you can, of course, come in and, um, you know, pin it down if you want. But I'm not going to do that. And so then the next thing I'm going to do is I don't want this to wrap all the way around my body. So I'm just going to take half of this. So it'll basically be, let me show you. So I'm gonna come in here. And again, this is just all freestyle guys. Um, if you feel like you need to have exact measurements for this, let me know and I can add them to the description box maybe. Maybe I'll remember to come in and do that. But okay, so I have this one piece here. I'm gonna come in now, I'm gonna cut off the salvage. Okay. 
And because this is sewing and not quilting, you know, doing patchwork quilting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sew this together with the typical 5 8 seam allowance, just FYI. So now I'm coming in, I just put this on the fold so that I have two equally width panels, okay? All right, I'm gonna put this aside. You could, um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do because I was gonna use something else, but I think this might actually work. Let's see if it's wide enough. Mm, it's not, I was gonna say you could use this as a lining. I'm just gonna use a plain fabric as the lining because I do want that. This is, um, you could have a thinner apron. I'm gonna add an extra layer uh, to this before I sew it together. So yeah, you can save this for another project. Um, so now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and get the um, waistband sections cut. Oh, that's what we're gonna use that for, yeah. So this is going to be our waistband ties. That's what we'll do. So we can make our ties a little thicker. So we're gonna just cut this in half so that we have equal width. Um, we're just cutting this in half so we have equal width waistband strips. I was kind of off, so I'm just gonna even these out, okay? So they're the same width. Again, because I'm freestyling it, I didn't mark it. You can mark it to make sure you're really getting exactly half. So those are gonna be our side ties. I'm gonna come in here and same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the salvage off. So that's all ready. I like waistbands that can wrap around and tie in the front. You can make your waistbands as long as you want. You'll see when we put these together, together how you can adjust it. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this piece to create my front waistband portion. So I want that to be a little bit wider than my straps are going to be. Actually, no, I'm going to do this the same as the straps. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Doing the same as the straps. Okay. And I have it um, double folded so that I will have it, you know, it needs a facing. So it's just going to be a built in facing. Okay. So let's just go ahead and measure these real quick so I can tell you what these dimensions are. So this front waistband strip, oh, let me cut off the salvage real quick. And you can, again, adjust this um, if you need the front to be wider. You're just gonna need a little bit more fabric. I would get a yard of this fabric instead of the three quarters of a yard so you could cut um, your extra strip and adjust the waist, but this is uh, 21 and a half inches wide and it is uh, a little over five and a half inches uh, for the waistband piece. And then my straps, my uh, ties rather, are about two and a half inches by, and this is on the fold. So that's 20 and 21 and a half. So we double that, which makes it 43. So it's 43 by two uh, and a half inches for our waistband ties, our apron ties. So the final thing I'm going to do before I start sewing this is I'm going to get I'm probably gonna use um, just some white cotton fabric because I do want this to be um, 
lined. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do this unlined. I'm gonna go ahead and do this unlined because I have the side tie, the side panels that I'm putting on. This is gonna be fine. All right. Let's just move forward because I don't want to make this too complicated. So what we're gonna do now is we have to pin together the side panels. All right. And so we have them here. I'm gonna put one over here on this side. And then we're gonna put the other one here, right sides facing. I'm gonna get some pins. We're gonna pin this together and then sew down those lines, all right? And again, I know this, this part is a little bit longer, but I do wanna show this in case there's anyone watching that's totally new. Apron is actually one of the easiest, fastest, projects you can do even though this is just kind of an improv apron um this is a basic concept that you can apply all right let me get this side here pinned down Okay, so the side seams are pinned together for that. Now I do have a serger, um, so I'm just gonna serge the edges. If you don't have a serger, you might consider doing a French seam um, where you would sew with the right size facing first and then iron that and then turn it uh, outside. If you um, have questions about that, let me know. You can also, after you sew this, cover the side seam with um, seam binding bias tape. And alternatively, you could, you know, cut this out with pinking shears to reduce the uh, fraying. That's one of the benefits of lining it, um, which you can also do after you're done. Um, after we sew these seams together and press it out, you can just lay this on top of another piece of fabric and use that as the lining. If you want to see a tutorial on any of that French seaming, um, how to line this, etc., just let me know. I'm happy to record it for you, okay? All right, I'm going to go to the sewing machine, sew this, serge it, iron it, and then I'll be back. All right, so let me show you what I did. I sewed together the side seams so you can see this floral is now attached to the panel on both sides. So now I have a wider piece of fabric as my apron. And I like how that looks a little patchworky, right? And then um, after I sewed those seams together using 5 8 inch seam allowance, I went on and I serged my edges with my serger. And then I press them towards the back or towards the floral print, okay? So that's nice and flat on um, both sides. Then what I did while I was already at the serger, I went on and actually serged the edges of the open edges of the side panel. And then I um, ironed it right along the edge of the serge line and then I folded it over and I ironed it again so that the serge edge is completely covered. If you don't have a serger, you just do the same thing, but this is a great way to not have a raw edge or in my case, a serged edge being seen, right? If your apron flops open, it's not that it's a big deal. It just makes your items look better, I think, as much as you can cover your seams. And I did that on both sides. Now, with that being said, Ordinarily, I would have done the same thing with the hem, but I want to keep um, I want to keep some of this floral with the ladybugs at the hemline. And so if I'd done another fold over, I would have lost all that. So in this case, since it's a panel, I just am folding it up at the with the serge edge will be showing. That's fine. If you don't have a serger, this would be a case where you could come together, you could piece together that extra strip of fabric 
and then actually just kind of sew that as a facing. Um, so you could sew it, right? And then you have that, I would make that facing piece about an inch and I would piece it together so it would go all the way across and I would sew it, iron it, and then tuck it under and that would give you kind of a hem band or facing kind of look. That's something I can show you guys again if you're interested in that. But if you have some sewing experience, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, um, you could also just do a really narrow hem. I mean, theoretically, I could tuck this again and press that really good and iron it. And that actually would be a great way to finish it as well, especially if you don't have a serger, okay? All right, I'm gonna stitch these seams down and then I'll be back to show you the next step. And actually also, I'm gonna stitch this down. I'm gonna go ahead and gather the waistline um, and I'll show you what that looks like uh, when I come back. I decided to go on and share the sewing process for this part just to have a bit of sewing on this, showing a little bit of sewing on this project. Also, these are all straight lines, but I do want to show you um, how I like to do uh, this bit of sewing, and then I'll show you how I do the gathering. So I just have this here. I have it basically where I'm catching this on the underside, right? But I want to stitch it from, I like to stitch, do my top stitching from the front or the hemming from the front in this case so that I know it stays straight and you can kind of feel here with your hand where that folded over edge is and just make sure you have your needle so for me it's right at about a quarter of a yard I mean a quarter of an inch uh, and I'm just gonna you know, go straight edge off. I forgot to do that. Before I start it, make sure you clip all those off. And I'm going to show you, I'm already going to do that. I'm going to tuck this little corner under so that this, let me just show you. I'm going to tuck this little corner under so that it looks mitered. And I'm just holding that down with my hand. But again, you can also pin that to keep it in place. And I'm just holding it down until it gets up under that presser foot. Because I want to do this hem and the side stitching uh, all in one go. So now I'm just pressing it down. I still have it mitered. And I'm going to get here with the needle down. I'm going to lift up my presser foot, turn it 90 degrees. I'm still using this guide here, that quarter inch seam mark lowering my presser foot and now I'm going to continue all in one stitch. And you know, I press this really good so I, you know, don't need to use pins um, but if you don't have a lot of sewing experience or you just like to pin feel free to, to pin but I definitely recommend still really pressing this well um, so that it stays nice and flat and it's again it's just one of those things that you know when you do it I think your sewing just looks more professional the more you iron your seams and things like that Well, same thing, I'm gonna come in here now, just tucking that in at a 45 degree angle so that it's kind of mitered. This is not super bulky fabric. Um, if it were, you could, you know, go in and trim some of that extra off as well. All right, needles down, lift the press of foot, turn 90 degrees, lower, and continue.
that's it for that. And now we're going to switch the machine to set up for um, doing a gathered stitch. And I'll show you how I do that on my machine. You can use a gathering foot um, also. I tend to just do this. So what I'm going to do, um, I have to change the angle, hold on. So now I'm gonna show you what I do to um, change to do um, my gathering stitches. So I have a digital computerized machine. I just crank up my um, stitch width and stitch length to their maximum. So on my machine, it's seven uh, and five. And I'm just gonna do a straight stitch. I'm gonna do two rows of straight stitching to show you, but to be honest, I usually only do one, but I'm gonna go ahead and do two because if you're new to this, it is easier. Okay, so I have the um, thread length and width adjusted. I don't change my tension, I just leave it on auto. When I had a manual sewing machine, I used to also change the thread tension and, and change that and make it really loose also. Um, but I don't need it quite that loose. And then the two key things, you wanna make sure you have a really nice long tail of thread because um, you're gonna be pulling on that um, when you go to do your gathering. And then I start with the, um, it's because the needle position has moved here as I've changed the width. Um, I am also now using this marker, um, which is typically my 3 8 inch marker. Um, so I have my raw edge lined up with that. Um, basically as close to the edge as you can get it without being, you know, completely off. So I'm just sewing and just letting the machine kind of pull the fabric through. If you did this and you loosened the tension, it would be, if you did this and you loosened the tension at the same time, your thread would be like really, really loose. And, um, I feel like when you're working with thicker fabric, that can actually be useful, it's easier to gather. But for these lighter weight fabrics, in my experience, I don't, and, and for my machine, I don't need to do that adjustment, so I don't bother. And so we're coming to the end, don't do any back stitching. Just go to the edge, needle down, lift it up. And then when you pull this out, same thing, leave a long tail. Often people won't leave a long enough tail and then when they go to, um, you know, pull on it, they'll lose it on the other end and then you gotta stitch it all over again. And so just go ahead. I know you feel like you're wasting a little bit of thread, but you're gonna be glad you did it when you go to pull your threads together, okay? So now I have this original um, loose thread stitch. I'm gonna have that lined up with the edge of my presser foot, and I'm gonna do another row of stitching. And again, this is just for this tutorial. Sorry, I forgot to pull my threads out so they don't get stitched down. And like I said, for me, normally I would just do one. You want to make sure you're not stitching over <laughs> your first stitch or you won't be able to pull your threads very easily. So I like to use that presser foot edge as a visual guide. Um, yeah. And so doing it this way, you don't end up with the super loose stitches like you do if you also you know took all your tension away but I find that I, I kind of like the way my gathers look I feel like I have less kind of puckers uh, when I do it this way and then let me show you I'm going to carefully I should have done this before I started I'm terrible about cutting off my other thread sometimes when I'm sewing I'm going to cut this off this is from the serger so I'm not accidentally pulling on that and then you see here I have these two sets of threads. I'm going to just pull on the um, top.
top two. So I'm separating the top two from the bottom two. You see that? Let me try to turn it so you can see. These are the top two threads and these are the bottom two threads. I have them separated. You're only pulling on the top two threads, okay? So I have them both in my hand and then I'm just going to very gently start pulling. And actually, let me go back to the cutting table so I can lay this out and show it a little bit better. Okay, so you'll be able to see a little bit better. And so see how you get like a little bit smaller gathering. I I like that kind of gathering versus the like big, loose, um, almost like pleaty looking gathering. And so what I'm doing is I'm just pulling some of the thread. Pull carefully. You don't want to snap the thread. And then I'm just sliding the fabric down the thread. See that? So I'm going to pull it so it's gathered a lot. And then I'm going to distribute it by sliding the fabric gently. I'm no longer pulling on that. I'm just holding it. And then I'm just guiding it down. And I like to work from both sides, right? So that's pretty well gathered. Now I'm going to come to the other side. Sometimes that's what happened here because I did not pull my thread out from under the presser foot as I should have. It got wrapped back in itself. So I just had to pull to separate that. So just be careful when you do that. Make sure you have um, lifted that presser foot to make sure those starting threads are, you know, out and away from the presser foot under the presser foot. So same thing from this side, okay? So I'm not gonna over, over gather now because when I go to attach this to my waistband, I can adjust. Um, I can make any adjustments, okay? All right. So now, remember, we have um, this set up so that it is going to kind of wrap around the front and then the sides, okay? And so what you want to do, and I'm going to, I'm actually going to put this up to me. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut one more strip. Yeah. Yep. So I've decided I want my I want my um, apron to be this wide so that it covers my whole front and then goes also around to my sides. So, so I'm gonna come in here and measure what that is. And we have here. And I'll put these final dimensions in. So I'm actually going to go back in. I'm going to cut a strip of fabric that is that uh, five inch, I think it was. But I'm going to have it 24 inches. And this is, if you're a smaller person, this will probably work for you. And that's how I would start. Measure um, around your waist where you want the waistband to stop. Sometimes you just want the waistband like at your sides and have, you know, all of the back exposed. But I like to have some of my sides exposed also. So yeah, this is a little bit shorter than I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to cut a five inch strip of this fabric and then I'm going to, um, what I should have done was cut that one piece into thirds and just had a skinnier waistband, but it's already done. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut this to be 25 inches. That's, that's my preference. Okay, so I've recut that piece. Um, I'm gonna go to the iron now. I'm gonna fold this in half 
and I'm gonna press that along here really, really good. And then I'm going to um, come and attach one of these edges to the gathered waistband. Let me uh, do that quickly. Okay, and so I'm back now and I have my piece folded in half very nicely. And then I went on and I actually pressed down my uh, a half an inch seam allowance. Well, my five eighths seam allowance rather <clears throat> on both of these sides. And uh, I'll show you why. When you attach your waistband, because the seams on your side seam is already finished, right? So when you come in and you attach your waistband, you want that to also be a finished edge, okay? So you're gonna sew it here and you want that also finished. You don't want raw edge there. So that's why that's like that. I like to pin when I'm gathering from the gathered side and I sew from the gathered side so that I know that, you know, I don't accidentally have anything puckered under. So I'm just going to um, do this and I'm not going to sew this just yet because um, I'll do that top stitch down at the end once I insert the waist ties. So first I'm just going to go in and I'm going to pin both sides because I've already, um, you know, I know that this is how wide I want my waistband to be. I'm going to go in here and find the center point of my panel, which I marked right here. And I'm going to put it to the center point of the waistband, which you should also mark and what you can do, what I do to mark it is basically fold it in half. Okay, so you can also do that. Fold it in half, right? And you can do a little snip or a pin. I just had a small dot that is actually very hard to see for you guys, but I can see it. So that's my halfway point. Do that before you start this. And then same thing, halfway point of your apron and I would mark that also before you gather. Um, I forgot to mention that. You can also see it is the halfway point is actually a part of the pattern, which is, which is easy for me to see. So anyway, just wanna share that quick tip because I forgot to do that. So see here, this is the marking here for the halfway point from the pattern. So anyway, I'm gonna match my halfway points. And then I'm going to evenly distribute this gathered section along the waistband. If you wanted your panel to mostly sit and then just have it more gathered with the side panels, you could do that too. I'm just going to evenly distribute mine. And this is just something you have to practice and play around with. And, um, you know, if this were like a true store-bought pattern, it would probably have some markings and indications. But this is just a freestyle. <laughs> this is just a freestyle today. And for me, honestly, that's how I really learned how to sew. As a teenager, I spent a lot of time just cutting stuff out <laughs> and sewing it together and seeing, you know, how things fit together and you make the mistakes and you understand, oh, this, this needs to go this way. I need to do this first. And so that's a part of becoming um, a better sewer is like a lot of things. You just have to practice, you know. I used to break the threads, and I still do sometimes, but I used to just break the threads all the time when I would do the gathers because I was always pulling too hard, or um, sometimes I wouldn't mark it, and so 
it wasn't even and you know if you had something that was kind of centered you'd notice it um because it was offset so anyway let's just some sewing chit chat <laughs> while we get this all gathered all right so my last distribution here and again, please let me know. This is right. This is a new channel for me. Um, I'd love to hear your input. Um, if you need to see more detail or if this just is just enough to get your creative juices going. But you can see here it is attached. And like I said, I like to pin and stitch from the gathered side so that I can avoid, you know, anything. If you have that under, right, you could accidentally have things kind of folding up and things like that. This way I can ensure that the gathered uh, section is flat. All right, I'm gonna go sew this and then I'll come back and show you how to do the final step, which is the side ties. Okay, so we have our two uh, strips that we are using for our ties. And what we need to do with this is turn it uh, right sides facing and we're gonna pin this all the way down. And again, I like my straps long because I like to be able to wrap my ties around my back of my waist and then bring it back to the front to tie it in the front. And it has kind of like a little bow. If you like just reaching behind you and tying behind you, then of course, feel free to do that. And, um, I'm gonna pin this one because this is how I'm sewing it because I have a turner. I'm gonna show you with the other one. I'm gonna pin it quickly to show you how you can do this if you don't have a turner to make it a little bit easier. And so what I'm gonna be doing, you see I put one pin here because I'm gonna sew down this edge here. Make sure you do your back tacking here. I'm gonna sew across here. Then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna sew all the way down the full length of it, okay? With that pin together and then i'm going to leave this unsewn because then the, i'm going to insert my tool turner in here get it all the way to the bottom and then push that through so that it's right side out so um that's why i'm leaving that one edge open so i'll finish pinning that just wanted to show that so if you don't have a tool turner this is what i recommend you doing coming to one of the short edges press that really really good i'm just doing a finger press okay and then press that with your iron really good and then you're going to fold it like this and you're going to press that really good all the way down okay press it really good all the way down and then after you've pressed that part really really good you're going to come back in here you're going to fold this under like that Press that side, fold that the same amount. This is about a quarter of an inch. You can fold it to that middle fold line also and just have a skinnier tie. That might be easier for some of you. Do it like that, okay? Press that down really good. Then you're gonna refold it, okay? And then you just are careful to go in and tuck that. And what I would do, I would do that same thing. I would miter those in. So after you get everything repressed really good, I would come in, unfold it, then tuck those corners in at a 45 degree angle, right? Fold that down and then go back in and repress everything really, really good. Stick your pins in there if you need to, to hold everything in place. And then you're gonna come in and you're just gonna stitch, you know, do your back stitch here, come down, back stitch, and then I would back stitch here and then go all the way across. And same thing, you leave this other edge just unopened, uh, unstitched rather, leave it open because that's going to get tucked into your waistband, which I'll show you, okay? That's just a quick tip if you don't have uh, a tool turner. Though, like I said, I would recommend you get one if you plan on doing, uh, you know, apparel sewing and accessory sewing because you often have to make ties and those little tool turning kits work really, really well, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get mine prepped for how I'm doing it, because I'm sewing it. Get this pinned together. And then um, after I get them turned, like I said, I will um, iron them down really good. I'll probably top stitch mine just because I like a good top stitch. 
and then I'll be back to show you the final um, step here, which will be the insertion of these ties into the waistband and then doing your final top stitching of everything, all right? Okay, so we have reached the end step here, guys. So let me just show you, I'm gonna trim these off. I'm gonna trim these edges off before I do it, but let me show you what I did. I went with the waistband. Remember I told you we we're gonna fold that in half and then we folded it under again so that on the inside, we'll have a really beautifully finished waistband. And you can baste stitch this first if you need to. I'm going to actually pin this from the outside. I'll just show you really quickly. First, I gotta put the, uh, the ties in first, but I'm just going to just pin that there and I'm gonna do a top stitch. Um, and then here, I should I, I was being a little bit chintzy with the fabric and I have, I have a pattern, uh, I have an apron that I make very similar to this. It just doesn't use a panel. So the dimensions of things are a little bit different and it's easier to adjust. And I, I was being a little chintzy with it. <laughs> with the fabric and in retrospect i'm realizing i should have done my waistband like i typically do um, because i don't like how small that is for the ties but this is also a different kind of apron so i'm going to leave this alone and what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to center it i feel like i'm going to center it um, and we'll see how that works out typically i have my tie the same width as the waistband um, and I showed that in my intro video, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do a separate tutorial on that and I'll do a step-by-step -step sewing uh, for anyone that really wants to see the full process sewn out. Um, and so I'll do my, you know, little design apron um, with that. But right now I'm just going to get these straps tucked in going to pin these all around holding everything down and then the last uh, step is going to be to top stitch and then this is the time where you would come in and adjust your ties if you don't want them this long you know you cut them off you can do a base stitch and uh, kind of test out how it ties and see if if that is too long for you like I said I'm designing mine so that it will wrap around the back it'll come around in the front and I can tie it in a bow tie not a bow tie, but you know, a tie. So I, anyway, I have those pinned in. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna do my back tack here. I'm gonna stitch down, I'm gonna stitch across here. And then I'm gonna come down here, pivot and turn and stitch here. Just like I showed you when I did the hemline, okay? All right, I'll be back to show you the finished apron. Okay, friends, so I hope you enjoyed this little bonus project featuring the Farm Friends collection from Mia Charo. I think this apron turned out super duper cute and uh, yeah, it comes together really quickly. Remember, as I said in the video, I will be sharing another uh, apron. I have a couple of apron uh, designs that I will be sharing with you all actually. Um, but I do have some coming up. We will do more step by step, especially for those of you who are really beginners and want to make sure that you really see the full process of how to put together the aprons. All right. So, and again, you can use this with any fabric. Um, you don't have to use a panel if you just wanted to do the sew along, but use the dimensions that I shared. That works just fine as well. All right. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back here on the channel again soon. In the meantime, I hope this has inspired you to get into your sewing room and make something beautiful today. All right, take care. Bye.